Hey, how you doing? It's Justin here. Um, just out for a little bit of a, a walk this afternoon. Um, around a, a big wood and part of a big estate. And, um, it's an amazing wood, absolutely brilliant. I'm just down at this little little pond and that at the moment. It's a great little place. It's in like a little bit of a dell. The water's sunking down, and and it's great. I'm just surrounded by spruce and pine trees, rowan, ash, silver birch some Cecil Oak, it's brilliant. Um, just kind of been thinking today. I get asked quite a few times um, about my camp that, that I have where I've got my permission and how did I go about that? Well, I'm quite lucky in that respect that I, I grew up in the local area and the family was sort of known um, through connections with a family and uh, known the wood for years and years and used to use it when I was in the cadets 35 odd years ago and I always sort of stayed in touch with that place and um, just started using it again earlier this year um, but how did I go about getting a permission well I kind of knew or I thought I knew who owned the wood um, but I didn't just want to jump straight in at the gun so so I just went on one of the local little Facebook groups, uh, the community pages, and um, I just just sort of asked a recommendation. Does anybody know who owns this wood? Uh, I've been for a walk through there today. Wasn't sure whether it was private or whether it was public. Obviously, I knew it was private. And from that, obviously, a couple of people piped up as they always do in community pages. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's such and such. It's, it's it's owned by this. And one of the estate workers said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm one of the estate workers. Um, what do you want to, what do you want to know about the wood?" And I just sort of said, "You know, I'd, I'd just like to get in contact because I think it's a great wood. Um, I do a lot of walking and and woods related stuff, and it'd just be nice if I could just have um, permission to actually go through there, so I'm not actually trespassing as as such." And I. I got in touch um, through the estate, found the estate email, and I just sent a very nicely worded email just explaining who I am. I was local to the area, and that, you know, I was I was just looking um, for some kind of permission if I was allowed to actually be able to walk through the wood and you know stop and have a brew, etc. And uh, the estate owner's son who runs the estate now, he just said, yeah, come come over and we'll have a chat. So I went over, I had a chat, and it was during that chat, you obviously got a good idea of just how much sort of bushcraft and wild camping stuff that I do. So we had a chat, I showed him quite a few of my pictures that I'd done um, of other places, and I really sort of spread the ethos of what I, I do was to, to, our number one ethos being leave no trace, have respect for the land that you're on and leave it as you find it and to just appreciate what's around there and uh, showed him a few of my little videos that I'd done and before you know it he was like listen you got permission and that was brilliant um, but I gave something back to him I said look this this wood is fantastic I know it's not been worked and that for years and years um, if there's anything I can do for you, gives a shout. So immediately said, you know, they're looking to bring part of the wood back to life. It needs recoppicing with a pollard in that needed to be done on the hazel part of the wood. And I've been along there a few times and I've got involved with that and I've helped them out. And now they've actually given me an area to work by myself around my, my camp area, which is brilliant. It's going to reinvigorate the woodland, encourage fresh growth, um, which will encourage more nature and wildlife into the area as well and that's brilliant so I'm lucky with that but not everybody else is that lucky so so what do you do do you stealth camp well I'd probably say the majority of us bushcrafters wild campers yeah of course we stealth camp we go off to places that we find and uh, and we do that but how can you make that work for you better well you find yourself a spot first of all and you need to figure out how much traffic it traffic's going to pass through there and how much footfall is there in the area you know we're all pretty sensible we know what's going to work for us so we go off the beaten track and that's all well and good but what you've got to do is obviously if you if you're stealth camping in like a private wood 
you need to minimize the, the, the risk of being found. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can go about that is obviously get off the beaten track. Don't keep going down great big massive paths all the time and then veer off into your little spot. Find other entry and exit spots into your camp. Um, if you keep continuing to go in on the same avenue or the same aspect into your, your bit that you're camping on and using all the time, before long it becomes very obvious someone's going in there. So find several different exit points around that area um, that you can go into and out to. It minimizes trail erosion. Um, you won't create a little footpath that becomes quite visible because, you know, everybody else will go walking and go along there and go, oh, look, there's another little footpath that goes out along there and they follow it down. And the next thing you know, they found your camp. So that, that's one, one way you can go about it. Obviously, you want to keep as low profile as possible. There's no point, you know, immediately going into a private wood thinking you'll be okay and not be found and that because, trust me, estate workers and that, they're out in the woods, they know what's going on and that, so you want to minimise the area that you're actually working on. Try it out a few times, see if it actually works for you. Low profile, don't go light in massive, massive fires, just nice and small, find out what works for you. Don't go cutting down loads of trees adjacent to your area. Try and use deadfall, get a little stockpile if you can, get that going. Um, try it out, try it out over a period of a few weeks or a couple of months and you'll soon get an idea if that area works for you. And then what you want to do is, you know, if you're walking through this woods and you're coming across rubbish and that, collect it all up, document it and that, carry a little bag with you. If you're finding up rubbish and you collect it all up and you put it in bags and you take it away, don't just dispose of it, take a picture of it that you've collected rubbish and that. So the minute you actually get to that point where you can go to the landowner and say, look, I've actually camped out here a few times and I, I, I think it's a great area, but every time I go out there I find loads of rubbish, um, you know, show them that you actually appreciate the area that they're in and that they haven't got the time to go out and collect every piece of rubbish that's in the ground. So, yeah, collect it up, document it. Look, I keep finding rubbish in this great big footpath area and now I've collected it all up and I've disposed of it for you. It's things like that that will work in your favour. What other things can you do? Well, it's all very well and good wanting to be able to just go into a wood, um, have your little stealth camp and that. You know, not every landowner is going to give you permission. So do other things as well that will work in your favour. Volunteer. Volunteer to help work on the estate. You know, little bits and that here and there. Um, but it's other little things that you can volunteer for as well that will stand in your favour. So if when you go and approach a landowner for permission or something like that, and they ask you what else do you do and you say do you know what I actually volunteer for a local wildlife trust um, woodland trust you know whatever your local area's got to hand get involved with that not only will you learn major major skills you know great skills to learn that you can put out into into the woods and that but it shows that you're willing to get involved and get stuck in you're not just some random Joe and wants to turn up and light a fire and have a beer in the woods. It's little things like that that will help. And when you ask for that permission, don't just jump in there straight away and say, me and 12 guys want to come in and light a fire and that. You need to sort of say, look, this is just me for a while. Um, this is what I do. I belong to these groups and that. And you can show them what you do. And it's over time you build that trust, build rapport. Rapport is everything. And um, most of the time, they'll probably go, yeah, why not? They'll come along, they'll check up on your camp and uh, when you're there, when you're not there. And it's, it's building that trust and rapport that they can actually leave you be in that little piece of your wood. And um, they'll know that you're a good guy, good lass. Um, you know, you volunteer for other, other associations and trusts and that, and, and that can work in your favour. So it's always worthwhile getting involved in local community projects. So... It's just a bit of a ramble today about getting out there, finding a piece of land. You know, not everyone's always going to be able to get that permission. You might just be using a local parkland wood or something like that. But whatever you do, just, just get out there. Just, just try it out for a few times rather than going, this is it, this is my camp, this is permanent, this is what I'm going to make out of it. Just get out there, even if it's park woodland, just go along and that. stay low to the ground. Don't take loads of you out expecting, you know, you'll be all right. They're aware of what goes on. So, yeah, it's just a bit of a rant and a ramble today. That's all it is. 
Um, it's good to see that some of my other friends and that have got camp missions and that on the go. Um, and, you know, if we're always working on other areas and that, it's nice to have one camp, but, you know, if you can have a several that you go off to, even if, you know, like mine is, is, is a permanent permission and, uh, yeah, it's quite well built up and that, but not every piece of land that I go off to is going to be like that. That's like here today. This is a, this is part of a big estate. Um, I do know the, the estate owners and that it's got a load of big bridleways that run through it. It has quite a lot of people going through it, but I might have a little stealthy little camp out here in one area, um, just to see how it sort of goes and then sort of maybe think next year maybe i'll come over and camp a few more times and speak to the landowner and see what they think about that but because it's a worked area um they take a lot of wood out there you're never guaranteed from like one season to the next what's going to be worked on and that so so that's my ramble really and that people ask how i get my camp and how i went about it and that just sort of gives you an idea and that about it's you know once you got that camp it's not just you know you get on with it and that's it you know, stay in touch with your landowner, check in regularly, you know, pop up to the estate or wherever if you know where he lives, you know, just, you know, Christmas coming up, what landowner doesn't like a bottle of whiskey? You know, it's just doing little things like that, touch base, let them know that you're actually there. If it's a big part of a working estate, it might be an area that they shoot on and things like that. So you need to find out if you're right at certain times of the year to be there. Let them know they're there. They might have other people coming in to shoot and they might not know where your area is. So... Just a couple of little pointers for you today. I'm going to crack on with my little walk now. Uh, enjoy your day. Leave us any comments, any suggestions, any thoughts, and that always welcome. And I'm going to sign out. So take care. See you later. Bye.